Hello class, welcome to day 6A. This is chapter 5, um, Diversity and Human Needs and Development. So this is trying to understand uh, human development, kind of like a, a little taste of, uh, you know, introduction to psychology. Definitions in this chapter, health, wellness, more. What's health? Health is a state of your physical, mental and social well-being. Doesn't mean that you're sick, doesn't mean that you're well, just means health just means the state of your physical, mental and social well-being. Then wellness is when you successfully balance um, everything in life. That includes the five different types of wellness, physical wellness, social wellness, emotional wellness, intellectual wellness, and spiritual wellness. Mores are acceptable traditional you know, customs of a particular group or culture or, or social class. So let's talk more about the five types of wellness. Physical wellness, um, things like being able to complete everyday tasks, um, social wellness, you know, you're able to relate um, in a proper way with other people. Emotional wellness, you're able to manage your stress and express your feelings. Intellectual wellness, you know, deals with growing and learning throughout life. Spiritual wellness includes religious practices, values, and more. So what are some things you do for yourself to achieve each of the five different types of wellness. Well, let's go back a little bit. Physical wellness, maybe you exercise. Um, you know, we need that. Uh, it's good for health. Social wellness, you're, you're in a relationship um, with people. You have friends or you have a spouse, sibling, friend, you know, neighbors that you interact with uh, on a regular basis. Emotional wellness, you know, you're able to manage your stress level. Uh, you don't overreact, you're not depressed, you, know, you don't have anxiety. You kind of, your, your emotional state is balanced. Intellectual wellness, you're continuously learning and reading and, you know, taking classes like you're in this class now. It's part of intellectual wellness. Spiritual wellness uh, means that you have relationship with, maybe, for, the, for example, for the Christians, they have a relationship with Christ, with God, and they uh, go to church on Sundays, and that helps them fulfill their spiritual wellness. Psychosocial needs, um, needs that involve social interaction, emotions, intellect, and spiritual. When we deal with the residents, we are supposed to ha use a holistic approach. So holistic health care means that you look at the totality of the person, those five things we, we just listed. Um, when you're taking care of a resident, uh, you want to make sure that you cover both physical and psychosocial needs. So a simple example of um, holistic care would be that an assistant taking time to talk with a resident while helping them to bathe. Um, Another example is um, you walk into a resident's room to feed them and while you're feeding, well, you're having a conversation about, you know, what's happening at home uh, with the family and so you're, you know, dealing with residents holistically. Can you think of a specific example of holistic care that you can give when caring? For a resident, normally when you go in there, look at them, uh, see if there's any any issue, greet them, ask them, you know, how they've been, if there's anything special. That, uh, for example, if you knew they went to a doctor's appointment uh, yesterday, and maybe you were gone by the time they came back, you can ask, well, oh, Miss Susie, how was your doctor's appointment yesterday? You know, um, again, your you, know, you were there to bait them or to dress them up, but you're also asking about other aspects of their life. What's a need? Something that is necessary for life. 
such as food, protection, shelter, activity, sleep, safety, comfort. So let's talk about um, this. Uh, th there is uh, this old time psychologist uh, named Maslow. So he made, he came up with this hierarchy of need, hierarchy of human need, and he put all the needs into um, categories from the most important to um, you know in a, in a pyramid form. For, uh, form. So he said that uh, human beings have um, psychosocial needs. And those needs are love and affection, acceptance by others, security, self-reliance, and independence in daily living, contact with others, and success and self-esteem. Well, let's just go to the pyramid right here. So if we start from the bottom, uh, physical needs, um, so he said that and that includes oxygen, water, food, elimination, and rest. Safety and security needs shelter, protection, and stability. Need for love, feeling loved and accepted by others. That Having that sense of belonging. Now you know, uh, like uh, I've talked about many times, some of the residents, when they're in the nursing home, they don't feel loved anymore. They don't feel that sense of belonging uh, with their families anymore because some of them, don't, their family members don't come to visit them at all. Uh, need for self-esteem, um, achievements, believe in one's own worth and value. Then you have need for self-actualization. Maybe they need to learn a new um, you know, skill, uh, create something, write a book, or something like that. So how can you, um, as a CNA, um, help your resident fulfill each level of Maslow's hierarchy of need? Let's go back to the pyramid again. Well, we um, make sure that they're breathing well, we, we feed them, we give them water, we toilet them, and we make sure that they sleep well. Um, shelter, protection, and stability, well, they're in the home, in the facility, so that's, that's shelter and protection. That feeling of love and acceptance, you know, for a lot of them, we become family. So, um, have that relationship with your resident where they see you as someone, um, I say not just a caregiver, but somebody who's caring and they can count on. Need for self-esteem, well, how can you help them fulfill that? You know, compliment your resident. You know, what I used to do um, every day when I make rounds, you know, I'll have something nice to say about each of my residents. Um, oh, Miss Susie, what a beautiful hair you have on today. What a beautiful outfit you have. Oh, I see you got your nails done. You know, notice something in them that makes them feel special, that you can compliment, and that it really goes a long way um, to make them achieve that self-esteem. Um, maybe a resident had a haircut. You say, oh, Mr. Johnson, wow, you look handsome. Um, I see you had a haircut. You know, you are you expecting a date or something? make them laugh and so on. So let's move on. Cultural diversity is a uh, means variety of people living and working together in the world. Transcultural nursing, study of various cultures with the goal of understanding different cultures. Yeah. Cultural competence, ongoing process of learning about other culture so that you can have a better knowledge of uh, different uh, cultures. So culture influences not only everyday choices like what people eat uh, and how they behave and so on and, and, and their health. How does your own culture influence your daily life choices? Um, how does it aff affect your approach to healthcare? Um, how could a nursing assistant best meet the uh, needs of resident from your culture. Well, um, I had a resident one time who was an Igbo resident and all she wanted to eat was fufu and jollof rice, which wasn't in the menu. <laughs> so um, we had to let the family, family know that uh, they need to be bringing food for her. Um, 
one one resident, uh, one staff member who, who was from a nearby village from with the resident, uh, spoke to me and said, "Oh, you know, she could, uh, you know, bring some jollof rice for her if that's okay with the uh, administration." So we talked to the dietitian and it did the facility okay. It. So every now and then she will bring, you know, jollof rice. She will make sure that the um, charge not sees it and make sure there's nothing there that will affect her health and you know she was allowed to eat that the family also had okayed it um family members play an important par uh, part in most uh, residents life uh, often um, support people uh, give each other defines the, fam the family more than the specific people involved there are different types of families so you have to know what family means this nuclear family, single parent family, married or committed couples, um, extended families, blended families, different types of families. Um, never judge the type of family that you see. You may be taking care of uh, a man and then come to find out that um, he says to you, oh, you know, um, Mr. Raymond, um, my husband will be coming to see me today. Uh, your husband? And you're looking at him, he's a man. What do you mean your husband? So, don't judge. Just say, okay. Um, keep your own opinion to yourself. Some ways that families do help residents, they take them out. Um, they uh, take them shopping. Sometimes they want to help take care of them. Um, they bring meals. They come and tell stories about other family members um, out in the community. So, if they want to come take care of the resident, try to assist them, give them um, the supplies they need. So, um, sometimes residents you know, and the family may turn to the nursing assistant when there is crisis. Remember, after a while, you as the nursing assistant become a trusted caregiver and a confidence so they might turn to you sometimes to um, you know to, to talk about things that they are going through and you know when a family member comes um, just listen closely sometimes they will complain about uh, issues um, just listen, don't argue with them. Um, you might say, oh ma'am, um, I'll call the charge nurse to respond to your concerns. And, but try to always maintain a boundary. Don't um, insult them at all. Let's talk about some religion. So this is explain ways to help resident with their spiritual needs. There are different types of religion. But religion is a set of beliefs concerning the cause and nature of the universe, um, different religions in the world. Buddhism, Christianity, Hinduism, Islam, Judaism, spirituality. Um, agnostic is a person who claims that he does not know or cannot know if God exists. Now, an atheist is a person who claims that there is no God. So, somebody who is agnostic is not sure whether there is God or not. Somebody who is an atheist is, is pretty sure that there is no God. So, does the assistant have to respect um, the beliefs and the religion of the resident? Don't try to convert them. Um, don't pray for them. Don't discuss religion. Um, try to stay you know, away from that and respect their, their own religious practice. Their religion might have a diet, dietary restriction. Make sure, um, just yesterday, a resident told me that um, he doesn't eat pork, but he's been getting pork in his tray. So I had, to talk, I had to talk to the dietitian about it and the kitchen staff to make sure that they do not send uh, pork to that resident. Sometimes the resident wants to pray or have a quiet time um, to worship. Um, if you walk into a room and they're praying, um, just give them the respect and courtesy 
uh, and privacy as well and let them pray or worship um, <clears throat> whatever you were trying to do for them can wait you know you come back and check and see if they're done How do cultural and religious practices relate to diet? We just spoke about that. Some culture and some diet, some um, religion um, forbid eating certain types of food. So just understand that. So ways to accommodate sexual needs. No sense you should be familiar with these terms that relate to sexual identity you know, back in the day you know it used to be man and a woman and that's it but for some reason um, now we have different types of you know sexual identity asexual bisexual celibate cross-dresser gay heterosexual lesbian transgender transition some of them I have no idea what they mean and you know it's it's difficult but you just have to respect them and um, don't gossip about them um, don't impose you know, on, on them don't say that they are committing anything just um, you know basically mind your business <laughs> no matter what they're not consistent feeling or believe about you know lesbian gay bisexual you must treat all residents with respect. What can an assistant do to respect resident sexual identity? Again, don't discuss it, you know, respect it. And so, human continue to have sexual needs throughout life, like we said earlier. Sexual urges do not end due to age or admission to a nursing home. Do not assume that you know what impact a disability has on sexuality. Again, we're still talking about you know how nursing system can help residents with their sexual needs. Um, knock, greet, introduce yourself, um, provide privacy. I said earlier, if you walk into that room and they masturbating or you know just you know, give them privacy, um, close the door, don't judge them, don't discuss it, and so on. See, um, grandpa and grandma, you know, sometimes they fall in love in a nursing home, you know. Growth and development, um, we're going to touch on this a little bit. Growth and development is an ongoing and complex process. Growth refers to the physical changes that can be <coughs> measured. Development means the emotional, social, and physical changes that occur. Different types of development, cognitive development, language, moral, motto, physical, sexual, and social development. So we're going to skip through some of this and go to um, middle adult and late adulthood. Um, 65 and older, that's time that people will retire. By the time that they need to um, look for enough, stay in a nursing home. Stereotype. Okay. Stereotype is a bias um, generalization about a group of people that is usually based on opinion. So, for example, people have uh, an opinion about black people, people have opinion about white people, people have opinion about Nigerians, for example. Um, I'll tell you a quick story of, uh, of a stereotype that I faced uh, here in the U.S. Um, around 2003 or so. Um, if anyone knows where F um, Fairwood Estate is in Bowie, so I was among the first people to buy a home there. Um, they were building phase two um, of about 15 phases. It's a large community. The price of the homes there, um, it says there was a signboard saying 400000 and up at the uh, entrance to the community. 
So I was driving around. I, I used to be in real estate then. Um, I, I, I did very well uh, in real estate. I would buy homes. Um, like I used to buy only, only brand new homes. And by the time it's the building is completed, the prices had gone up, will go up. So then I will sell it. Sometimes I'll make 50,000, sometimes 25, sometimes 15, sometimes 30. Um, so I was always looking for a good deal. So I was driving by and I saw this sign. Um, that day I happened to drive a Corolla, but I had other cars. I had a t-shirt and jeans on. Drove to the uh, sales uh, building. Parked the car, came out. The sales lady, I will never forget her name, Ethel. She was sitting there, she didn't move. I walked all the way to her desk. And she said, hello, may I help you? I said, yes, I'm here to look at, um, you know, your houses for sale. She looked at me and she said, did you see the price on the signboard? I said, yes, I saw the price. It says 400000 and up. I said, okay. Do you have a pre-approval letter from the bank? That's like, uh, if you're trying to buy a house, uh, sometimes you go to the bank first, let the bank pre-approve you and let you know what you can be qualified for or approved for. So then they will give you a letter saying that, okay, you can buy a house of 200000 or you can buy a house of a million. So now you can take that pre-approval letter. Um, if, you know, the place you're trying to buy a house, if they ask for it. But many, many places don't ask for it. She just assumed that I couldn't afford the house because she saw me, I drove a Corolla and I had a, a t-shirt and jeans on. So I said, but can I just see like a, a, a showcase of the houses? Can I see the lots that are available? She said, no, and she, you know, when I get a pre-approval letter from the bank, then I can come back and she will be glad to show me. I said, okay, fine, and, and I left. This was like on a Tuesday. I went home, I told my wife at the time about the place and that I, actually we, we wanted to buy a house and live there. So, and sell the, the house that we, we, we own at the time. So she was excited, she said, okay, well, after church, um, maybe we can go look at the house. So that, a week passed, the following Sunday, after church, well, because it's a Sunday, I was driving a Lexus truck. Um, back then, the biggest Lexus was uh, LX, I think, 470. And, you know, I had a suit and tie on. Uh, everybody was well dressed because it was after church. We went to church. So then, after church, we drove to the place. The same woman was there, Miss Ethel. Before I could park the car, this woman was out waiting by the car. I parked the car before I could turn the key off, uh, the engine off. She already opened the back door because she saw kids in the back and I cast it. Pick up now uh, my, my youngest uh, daughter now. She was still sitting in the car seat at the time. So she picked her up and uh, you know directed the children and said oh hi what a wonderful family come this way uh, we have this we have a beautiful children's section over here and we have toys for them and we have snacks for them and um, they'll be fine over there come let me show you what we have oh uh, we have uh, she went to the wall uh, took me took us to the wall and started showing us the houses that she had available um, this model here um, is 500,000, um, it's four rooms, half this and that. This other model is this and that. This woman did not ask me for a pre-approval letter this time. She did not ask me if I saw the sign at the entrance. Why? Because this time I'm driving a big car, I'm dressed in suit and tie, so that that was her stereotype. Um, the same person, she forgot that it was me, that she had refused to show me a house because I didn't have a pre-approval letter. Uh, but anyway, when the house was done and we, we went to closing, 
um, like eight months later, you know, I went there and I said to her, do you remember one time I came here in a, in a driving a Corolla, I was in a shirt and, and jeans, and you refused to show me a house, you said I should go bring a pre-approval letter. She said, me? I have no idea what you're talking about. You must have me mixed up with somebody else. I said, no, Miss Etel, it's you. I remember very well. She said, no, it's not her. She would never do a thing like that. Said, yeah, but you did. But anyway, um, we became friends later on. So that happens in life. People will see you the way you look and judge you one way or the other. That's just a bias uh, based on their opinion. Ageism is stereotype or prejudice towards or discrimi discrimination against the elderly. So when you say things like, oh, the elderly, uh, old people are always grumpy, or old people don't have sex anymore, then that's your, your stereotyping because that's what you think. Um, but that's not true um, about the, the elderly people. So stereotypes about the elderly are unfair and are not true in most cases. So try not to um, commit ageism. Nursing assistant must be able to tell what is true and what is not true about the aging process. Developmental disability is a you know, chronic condition that restricts physical or mental ability. So developmental disability could be a physical disability or it could be a mental disability. Some of the um, developmental disabilities, um, if you've taken um, the my, my um, CMT class, um, that CMT class is based on DDA environment, which is uh, Developmental Disability Administration. These are some of the um, illnesses or you know, uh, disabilities that they have. Intellectual disability that they were born with, cerebral palsy, autism, um, fragile X uh, syndrome. So guidelines for providing care to residents with developmental disability, well, you still have to treat them as adults. So even though um, a 20 year old might still have the mental capacity of a five year old because of their intellectual disability, you still gonna treat them like a 20 year old, like an adult. I encourage them to participate in their own activities and be patient with them and talk to them respectfully and um, try to, you know, encourage them to learn new things, promote independence, don't let them fall, be patient, and that's the end of cultural diversity.